Morning at NTV, we are live from Kampala Serena Conference Center. I'm Andrew Chama. Get our moon to our and see. Now, the 2021 general election campaign is coming to an end, and this has been a virtual campaign on some grids, and at most a very confrontational one. But in the middle of it all, have voters hold enough information? to make informed decisions. Now, to speak to us about this, we have Mr. Jacob Eyeru, the chairperson of the National Youth Council. We have uh, Mr. Bianabie Kamadi, the director of research and education at the Uganda Human Rights Commission. And joining us via Zoom later, we'll be having Mr. Gilbert Sendugwa, the executive <coughs> director of the African Freedom of Information Center. Good morning, gentlemen. Good morning, Andrew. Good well, morning, it's, Andrew. It, it, it's exciting to have both of you, one from mm. Human Rights and one from the Youth Council. Um, the youth have been entirely very vibrant in this mm. entire scheme, uh, rather this entire election. I'll come to that a little later. Let me start off with Mr. Kamadi here. What do you make as the Uganda Human Rights uh, Commission when you look at this election? Well, uh, <clears throat> it's a general question. Mm. But uh, <clears throat> the campaigns are still going on. Mm. We have been at it right from the start of the elections. Mm -hmm. As we all know, elections are not an event. It's a process. Oh, yes. The EC launched the roadmap way back in, in 2018, but it was disrupted by the outbreak of the COVID pandemic. Mm. Later, a revised roadmap came out in June last year. And now we are moving to the D-Day. As we have been appealing to the population mm. right from the beginning, let us increase our momentum and zeal right now to ensure that next week, uh, starting with the 14th of January, presidential and parliamentary elections, that we actually cast our vote. Mm. This is the time to make uh, informed choices. Mm -hmm. There are people who keep flip-flopping from one political camp to another. It is their right. Mm. So the ballot is secret on the 14th of January, and it is important that everybody gets out to go and vote. Before I came to this show, I was watching you with the, the, ca, uh, I the think cartoonist. The cartoonist. Yes. <laughs> and he was saying politics affects uh, everything. everything of mm. our life. Mm. And uh, I agree with him. Mm. We have people who think uh, those thing, uh, politics doesn't matter. In anything. In anything. Mm. That's why we, use some, we usually have a low voter turnout. Yeah. It's not right. Don't remain in the comfort of your sitting room on 14th January mm. because Article 1 of our Constitution is about sovereignty of the people. Mm. And uh, it provides that people shall determine how they should be governed through their will and consent uh, through regular free and fair elections. Mm -hmm. This is an opportunity that comes once every five years. Why don't you want to make a decision on who should be making decisions on your behalf mm. because politicians exercise uh, dis uh, dis uh, make decisions mm. on uh, delegated authority yeah. so the sovereignty of the people is at its peak now mm. and everybody out there we would like to have a 100 percent voter turnout <laughs> okay yeah jacob on your <laughs> side do you feel the populace has got enough information with regards to the virtual campaigns approach we took in the wake of covid 19 um, th thank you, Andrew, mm. and uh, I want to thank our viewers for joining us this morning. Mm. I, I think that um, we have had a challenge. Um, as a country? As a country, mm. yes. Um, the approach to virtual campaigning mm. has uh, been, in some cases, um, mm. chosen by, by a few of, of the participants, mm -hmm. and in other cases, defied by the majority mm. of the participants. When you have a situation where there is no clarity, mm. especially from participants, then voters have uh, confusing information. Uh, on one part, we are saying we are dealing with a pandemic mm. and everyone needs to observe a particular modus of, of, of um, campaigning. Mm. On the other part, we have to deal with um, people that would rather put uh, their interest first than the interest of the country uh, and its safety. 
So in, in that far going, um, because not everyone has access to media in this country, oh, yes. uh, some people think that campaigns are supposed to still be crowds gathering, mm -hmm. uh, and they have not had the, 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 the luxury of information. Mm -hmm. While others that have had the luxury of information also seem not to understand why they should continue observing their own part uh, oh, yes. of the bargain, mm -hmm. uh, while other political parties and players are allowed to go on with reckless abandon. Uh, mm. Because it is a political season, it has uh, everything has political implications. At all when, levels. At all levels. Yes. When you're trying to enforce a directive, um, mm. of, of um, a guideline of uh, electoral commission, mm. you end up with a situation where some people see you as oppressing uh, their their will to of course, their free will, their freedom to, 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 to congregate them, yes. and, and so on. While, in fact, you are only enforcing a guideline. <laughs> oh, yes. I, th I think that uh, we need a conversation in the mm. country to agree on what should happen and what should not happen. The I youth have been very uh, vibrant, and I've seen them on, 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 on numerous occasions. Mm. Even with the SOPs in play, even with all the directives at play at different layers, mm. the youth have been defiant. From where you stand, do you think we have got enough information to make the right decisions as a youthful um, block? Mm. The politics of this country have, uh, for more years than not, mm. been uh, driven by our history. Mm. Uh, and and uh, everyone speaks to our history of where we have come from and where we should go. Mm. And uh, the youth of this <coughs> country do not enjoy, because youth are 30 and below. Oh, yeah. So um, about 80% of us don't enjoy the knowledge uh, or the benefit of the knowledge of the history of this country Why? in experience mm. uh, because we have really not been in a situation where there is no war mm. on, on, or where there is a war on Kampala streets mm. so, so we don't understand what it means to talk about peace we don't understand uh, any other thing we are in a conversation of socioeconomic needs mm. uh, we don't have jobs uh, the schools are not performing as we want and so on so, so these young people mm. then uh, neglect some of the critical issues of the country uh, and, and can be used in, in one way or the other by people for their own political gain. What we have attempted to do is to clarify and mm. say there needs to be information sourcing from all ends. And mm. this information needs to be balanced sourcing. Mm. When you have balanced sourcing, then you can have informed uh, decisions and positions. Because it's balanced, that approach. Exactly. Okay. Uh, so, so we don't listen to one narrative. <laughs> mm. We listen to all narratives to inform um, our decisions. But on the particularity of having information, mm. we think that the Electoral Commission could have done better in voter education. Mm. Um, in six months, uh, more recently, um, mm. we have not been seeing enough adverts telling people go to vote. vote and all but if, if you're going to put adverts on TV alone, mm. um, the problem is that TVs themselves uh, have access to about only 14% of our population. Mm. So, so you, you're looking at a situation where you actually need people perhaps with handbills, <laughs> you know, in, in villages oh, yes. to be able to Village give level. information oh, yes. to our people. Okay, uh, coming back to you, Mr. Kamadi here. What should a campaign that provides <coughs> enough information to the voters look like from the human rights perspective? Um, from the human rights perspective, we talk about the human rights-based approach to elections. Mm. And that is? Uh, one important principle is the principle of participation. Mm. And uh, you cannot uh, talk to people, you cannot deliver your message if you don't allow room to hear from them. It is a two-way process. Mm. And now we have had the challenge of the COVID pandemic mm. where uh, accessing voters is restricted to 200 people. Mm. And uh, no doubt there are more than 200 people in a district, in a constituency. Mm. That has been quite challenging. Mm. But also uh, the use of the media platforms has been encouraged and it is ongoing. Mm. Now, the challenge that we have faced <coughs> is... Um, some of the politicians mm. uh, who have been contravening the COVID-19 guidelines, guidelines mm. with the thinking that uh, the more people you talk to, actually they believe in physical meetings, m some of them, oh, yes. than uh, the digital right. ones, like mm. the one we are conducting mm. right now. Mm. But um, for even for the little time that is left, mm. 
Mm. I see politicians crossing the country, the presidential candidates, mm. the parliamentary candidates are also doing their best uh, door to door. Uh, in order for the voters to get information, mm. you don't necessarily need crowds, in my own opinion. Uh, crowds are good, but also other methods should be uh, explored as much as possible. Mm. So we have a mixed uh, uh, scorecard. Some people feel they have not, uh, some candidates feel they have not reached some voters. Mm -hmm. But I want to believe <coughs> uh, majority of the voters in this country, mm. by now, almost everybody knows what is going to happen on January 14th. Mm. And uh, when you see the patterns of people who vote, mm. I, it's not necessarily that uh, everybody who votes for a given candidate must first go and uh, sit in a physical meeting. Mm. I've been voting mm. and I continue to vote, mm. but I've never attended any campaign rally. So how, what do you vote for? I know people to vote. They have been here on mm. TV. Mm. I've heard them on radio. Mm. Sport messages are going on. Mm. So we see them, we hear them. Mm. Yeah, and uh, I want to believe I'm not alone. Mm. There are very many people who don't physically go to campaign meetings. venue mm. meetings. Mm. Mm. But they make their choices. Okay. So it's, um, it's not uh, entirely correct to say that I must gather 1,000 people I must gather 300. Mm. If it were in those other times where there were no restrictions, mm. well and good. But for now, it is important to acknowledge the challenges in our midst, but also use all available means mm. here. Okay. Joining us uh, from Zoom, we have uh, Mr. Gilbert Sendugwa, the Executive Director of the African Freedom of Information Center. Good morning, Mr. Sendugwa. Good morning. Uh, thank you for having me here. Good morning, dear listeners. Okay. To start with, uh, Mr. Sendugwa, you've watched the elections on the sidelines as one of the institutions that focuses a lot on access to information. As a country, how best can we become better with regards to access to information to make informed decisions? Yeah, thank you very much. Uh, first of all, that uh, access to electoral information by voters mm. in Uganda is quite challenged. You recall... Ah, uh, network, the network, the network. You recall that, uh, for example, in the past... Uh. Over... Uh, ...votes... Uh, uh, Okay, uh, uh, Mr. Sengu, I'm going to let you go for now, but I, I would suggest if I could just have your audio and the video looks to be a little bit, you know, getty. If we could get the audio and then we could get back to you a little it's later. Registered voters did not okay, uh, they're trying to fix this. Let's come back here. Coming back to you, Jacob, tell us, um, now I have a chance to, to hear your manifesto and why it's only in English. One manifesto. Mm, your manifesto. Tell us about your manifesto and tell us wh why most of these manifestos are in English. They're not in our local language that are in tandem with our pain points in our society. Uh, okay. I, I think that the manifestos being in English is not an issue. Mm. It's, if anything, a representation of where we should be as a country. Mm. Um, with, with the amount of time we have had to attempt education, mm. um, we should <coughs> have now a good population that is, is, is as, uh, literate enough Mm. to understand English. However, mm. I also do not think that people uh, read manifestos per se, okay. uh, which is the point of campaigning, mm. um, that you take the manifesto to the people, mm. uh, because the reading culture is not a guarantee to that the it's information. Not. Exactly. Mm. So I think that manifestos generally um, are uh, a tool mm. to, 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 to those that can access them. And those who um, can't access and those who can't access them, the manifesto is brought to them in campaign. Mm. Um, I am a member of the NRM, of course, um, and uh, I I think that we have um, by far um, an unmatched manifesto in this campaign. Coming there, uh, as a chairperson of the National Youth Council, um, have the young 
the, the youth of the participated in the campaign and what are they saying from your grid and the information you're gathering and we know your candidate is um your kaguta seven to be exact because you fall in that party but you speak for the entire youth greed in the nation yeah so um what are the youth saying and what are these pain points and how best are we solving them the, the, i think it's no secret that mm. the youth are talking unemployment uh who is solving unemployment mm. the challenge is that the bulge of unemployment that is with us now mm. has uh, come into existence within one uh presidency and that is uh the presidency of the general uh yoweri kaguta museveni mm. the uh, and, and understanding how we get out of unemployment mm. is the intention of the youth leadership um ours is to show that when you want to get out of intent uh, unemployment you mm. need to create jobs mm. so it is our position to offer youth <coughs> an understanding of how jobs are created mm. when they understand the process then they appreciate which uh, presidential candidate provides how far uh, with the that process, process. We have been uh, holding press releases uh, mm. and press conferences um, with regard to what youth want and what youth want to see. Mm. And uh, we came up with three uh, major issues uh, mm -hmm. that youth want addressed. Uh, first of all, of course, is, is the question of uh, jobs mm. uh, and, and underemployment. Uh, if, if we can find for young people what to do mm. and uh, earn a, a good uh, living from this uh, growing economy, then it is a, it's an inclusive uh, and, and job uh, growing economy. Mm -hmm. The second thing is on on, on health. Uh, young people want better access to services of health <coughs> in uh, their communities. Mm -hmm. um, we have a big problem of teenage pregnancies, mm -hmm. um, and, and and young people um, who are a bit elite know the dangers of multiple uh, increases in teenage pregnancies. So mm -hmm. we have tried to have engagements uh, on that basis. Mm -hmm. The third and final one is largely education. Um, young people that cannot uh that do not benefit from either upe or use mm. but are part of the economy are trying to see how does the planning of the current presidential candidate cater for me uh who is now on the street and uh i, I can no longer go back to school uh, so free education is good but uh strategic education for us is, is better, better. Uh, because uh, in countries that we like to make reference to, mm. education is not really how many degrees you've attained, uh, how much of the, the country has degrees. Right. Education is how much of the country has learned a skill mm. to execute uh, an act and have a living. Mm. So we, we are looking at uh, those as a guiding principle. Okay. Um, Gilbert Sendugwa, thank you so much, Jacob. Gilbert Sendugwa, if you're still online, um, can we hear your opinion about this? Okay, he's still not with us. Uh, coming back to you, Mr. Kamadi. The election, <clears throat> the campaign, has been full of so much of uh, so-called uh, right abuses. Is the human, is the Uganda human rights following up on them? And where is the Uganda human rights in all this? Well, <clears throat> uh, <clears throat> you raise a, a very important aspect. Mm. <clears throat> it's very easy on the face value to say there has been a human rights violation. Yes. And we see some of these uh, in the media. Mm. But as the Uganda Human Rights Commission, we have uh, an, uh, a criteria under which we handle these issues, mm. the admissibility criteria. Mm. So if we see uh, someone maybe being beaten on TV, mm. uh, to us, <clears throat> that is bad, but it's an allegation. Even with you seeing it on TV? Yes. Come on. No, let, <laughs> uh, let me tell you. The point I'm making, we would like somebody who, who has been, uh, whose right has been allegedly violated. Okay. To come and <clears throat> complain, and then we subject that uh, uh, violation so to you, investigation. You as an institution, you yes. can't see these <clears throat> abuses in broad daylight on the media with empirical evidence and you take up these these these, these I was these I was actions. coming to that mm. and that 52 of our constitution mm. we are mandated to investigate complaints of human rights violations uh, or either on a complaint made uh -huh. or on our own initiative okay so it's fine mm. but uh, on our own initiative it's uh, extremely challenging looking at what is happening for instance in the campaigns mm. it is practically <clears throat> difficult to initiate uh, investigations on our own throughout the country 
but we try as much as we can. Mm. But going back to what you have raised, uh, we also come out and speak out to what we have seen as a first step, and we have been doing that, and uh, I'm using this opportunity to again talk about it, mm. that it's not right to beat up Ugandans. Tear gas has become the order of the day. It's mm. not right, and no rightful thinking member of society should do uh, should, uh, should lose uh, a life. Uh, should, uh, should lose a life or should want this to happen. Mm. We have invested greatly in training the Uganda police on human rights mm. to the extent that it is a subject taught in their training schools. Mm. We are equally puzzled as to why some policemen behave in the way they do. Mm. And we would like to encourage them even as we go to next week, mm. that uh, let us uphold the dignity of the human person. This election is about human, is about Ugandans. Mm. So if you maim them, you torture them, you kill them, then for who are you working? Mm -hmm. It is the population. Let us get this clearly and respect the dignity of the human person. Okay. It is a productive population that contributes to national development. Mm. You are not going to have people paying taxes when they are in hospitals, nursing wounds mm. and injuries. It's not right. Mm. We need to be ideologically correct mm. and understand the, the fundamental human rights, the rights of the human being. Mm. Therefore, <coughs> we urge the Uganda police to respect uh, the human rights of the people in line with Article 221 of the Constitution of Uganda. Okay. What is the Uganda Human Rights doing about this with all that you've seen on, on in mainstream media? We have mm. been training policemen mm. and we continue to do so mm. because we believe you, uh, uh, you cannot claim for a right you don't know mm. or you, can fight, you cannot fight for the rights you do not know. Mm. Some policemen are ignorant of these uh, provisions I'm talking about. Okay. For them, especially the ones on the lower levels, mm. because I've interacted with them mm. across the country. Mm. Uh, some of them, when you talk to them about prevention and prohibition of torture act, they have never even seen it. Mm. Some of them, when you tell them about the Human Rights, um, the Human Rights Enforcement Act 219, which really places individual responsibility on each of them. Mm. Some, th some of them are not aware. Mm. So we are trying our best to speak to them uh, in light of the uh, scarce resources mm. to ensure that especially <coughs> those who are high-handed, they are good policemen as well we deal with. Absolutely. But if you taint the image of the Uganda police, mm. you actually look at it and say, in whose interests are they working? And that brings me to the question. Yeah. Do we have some <coughs> Ugandans who have already lodged in complaints about their rights being abused? In yes, the of the yes, yes. We have complaints we have registered mm. in, the case, uh, in the course of these campaigns. Mm. And uh, I'm not at liberty to talk about them here because they are still under investigations. Mm. But we have quite a number. We have quite a number of complaints we have received. Mm. They are being investigated. But now that is to offer redress. It is better to invest in prevention. I wouldn't want to be proud that people have lodged complaints. No, mm. we don't want to receive any complaint. Let us invest in prevention. If you are a district police commander, mm. uh, why don't you do everything possible to ensure that there are no violations taking place? Of course, I know there is the other side of the population. Mm. Some of our friends, uh, he, li he leads here. Mm. They want to act in a funny way of defiance all the time. <laughs> yeah. So uh, the duties of a citizen, and mm. as he was talking about job creation, mm. the, uh, the youth looking for which presidential candidate will provide for them jobs, mm. I may not be a youth under the law, mm. but I'm the youth. I'm a youth when I look at myself. Oh, yes. Yeah, I'm mm. above that, <laughs> so I'm legally, uh, I'm legally not considered to be a youth. <laughs> yes. But uh, in physically, other, you physically still I'm, I'm a youth. Yes. The mentality, uh, this mentality of uh, tokenism mm. and uh, and begging, mm. is killing the youth in this country. Mm. I started working for myself mm. as early as uh, primary three, mm. earning a living. Mm. When, this, when there was uh, a, 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 
currency reform in 1987. Mm. I was in primary three. A youth. And I had money to exchange. Yes. It doesn't matter how much, but mm. I was making a part of the exchange. That, yes. So um, the youth should know that don't wait for a presidential candidate mm. who is going to be elected on January 14th mm. in order for you to get what to do. Mm. Let us have uh, uh, youth are encouraged to think outside the box. Mm. You see, employment does not mean getting a job in, K in KCCA in an office. Mm. What have you done with your one acre of land around you? Again, exactly. Mm. That is also a human rights based approach of, uh, of empowerment. Absolutely. Yeah. Mr. Gilbert <laughs> Sendugu, I understand you're now back with us. Can you hear me? <clears throat> Mr. Gilbert? Yes, I do hear you. Good okay. Morning. Earlier on, you're making a Hello. submission. Good morning. Good morning. Earlier on, you, you're making a submission. Can you carry on with it? Good morning. Good morning, Mr. Sendugwa. Thank you very much. I mm. was saying that... Uh, uh, thank you very much. Yes, good morning. I was saying that uh, access to information is very, very important mm. in helping people to... Uh, what is uh, taking place, also to make informed choice. In respect to knowing what is taking place, people should know who are the candidates. They should know what each of the candidates is standing for and what they offer. What are they, uh, their manifestos saying? What is their track record? Is what they promise um, Likely to be delivered if they are elected based on their uh, uh, history. Now, on, uh, on uh, um, the need to participate, uh, and the critical in Uganda is very, very critical because you know that uh, um, the voter turn up has been very low. Mm. About 40% of registered voters do not turn up. This could be partly due to lack of information on the process, mm -hmm. but it could also be attributed to lack of trust, both of which uh, hinge on the information that people have. Now, if the organizers of elections are perceived not to be uh, impartial, independent, mm -hmm. that may affect uh, people's ability to participate. They may not turn up to vote. If they think that uh, you know, the, uh, the result is already determined, then they may not turn up. So people need reassurance that everything is okay and the, uh, uh, the law is being followed and they will turn up and vote. Mm. So uh, now regarding uh, this particular uh, election of 2021 uh, in the midst of COVID-19, mm. Access to information is particularly challenged because uh, after radio, the biggest source of information for ordinary people, according to statistics, is word of mouth. Mm. And in the context of elections, this is uh, rallies, public rallies and <clears throat> meetings. Uh, so given that this is regulated, it is a big challenge. Coming to radio, which is the biggest source of information, radio is also challenged in the sense that there is a post that is attached to it. Mm. Some candidates have had um, difficulties in accessing uh, radio, either because they cannot afford the, the cost, or uh, even when they pay, they are not uh, allowed to, to, to go to radio talk shows and explain their agenda to, to the voters. <clears throat> So based on those, we can say that uh, you know, access to information in this particular upcoming elections uh, is really very, very challenging. Mm. How best can we do better, uh, Mr. Sendugwa, from your perspective as someone who has been at the forefront with access to information? What best measures and approaches can we engage as a nation? It's very, to very important. Hello. It yes, is Kalia. very, very important for all electoral stakeholders, including the Electoral Commission, Uganda Police, the Army, you know, Human Rights Commission, and all the other stakeholders, political parties included, to recognize that 
uh, an election is an important uh, process, democratic process. Mm -hmm. It's not a ritual. Mm -hmm. And for that to be meaningful, people need information. We have also to recognize that people do not access information in the same way. Mm. You know, we have people with disabilities, and statistics show that there are about 12.4% uh, of uh, Ugandan, uh, Ugandans who are people with disabilities. But, you know, uh, being disabled presents its own challenges in accessing public information. Some of them will not have be able to read. Some of them will not be able to listen to, to radio, for example, and mm -hmm. TV. Some of them will not be able to walk to places or public meetings where they can access information on, on, vote, on, on candidates. So there is need to ensure inclusiveness, to put in place measures and mechanisms that are going to ensure that you know everyone can access the information they need in order to make informed choice. Okay. This goes hand in hand in ensuring that candidates have unlimited access to radio, mm -hmm. RDCs, owners should ensure that uh, candidates have a chance to explain their message mm -hmm. to the voters. Also, mm -hmm. The way um, government is uh, active in enforcing uh, COVID-19 guidelines, it should be more active <clears throat> in facilitating a brief transparent election that has enabled everyone to participate in the society of you. In that case, I think the government should have paid for uh, radio, mm -hmm and TV, especially for presidential candidates, but, or uh, even the COVID-19 pandemic, that people can access uh, information on, uh, on these elections. Thank you so much, Mr. Sendugwa. That is very remarkable. And also to reassure. <clears throat> Um, because of time, I, I have to let you go, Mr. Sendugo, but thank you so much for your submission. Um, Jacob, he has alluded to something that we should have had these conversations of election awareness and sensitization six months before. Your government, the NRM, promised radios, how far with the radios, and people have not received these radios, and some of them have not equally received masks, and this is a youth block you're leading. Uh, thank you. Did uh, you follow up? Did you have follow up mechanism, especially for us, the youth? Mm. First and foremost, I, I don't know why you say uh, my government. Mm. I, I am not a minister. In You're in the NRM. I am only one month or two into office. <laughs> okay. However, um, uh, to substantiate, um, yes, there was a promise for radios. Mm. I am also interested in what happened to the radios. Mm. Um, so you being the journalist, you could help me more. But you're in the party that promised. Well, Possibly you could have a follow-up mechanism. I, I, and, and I am very busy <laughs> with uh, youth matters. All right, as we're concluding, <laughs> gentlemen, because of time, <laughs> what could be your one word to the, to, to the youth? Mm. You're, you're leading a very <clears throat> critical um, mass, if I should call it, or uh, block... Mm. as you're heading for elections. What's your message to them? Thank you. Um, young people anywhere in this country, uh, young Ugandans, uh, wherever you are, mm -hmm. uh, we have a country that has been built for a long time. Our stories have come from independence, but mm -hmm. ours has been a story of 30 years. Mm -hmm. I request you um, to uphold, number one, the peace in the country. Mm -hmm. It is your responsibility to have a peaceful coexistence uh, with your neighbors regardless of their political shades of opinion. I'm in the NRM, you might be in NUP, another might be in the FDC or any other political shade. We are all <coughs> Ugandans first before mm -hmm. we are uh, in different political shades. So let us look at each other as brothers and sisters mm -hmm. and go through this exercise um, with that most peace. Do not be used to propagate violence. Mm -hmm. Violence begets violence. And so anyone that uses you for violence uses you for their own political gain <laughs> and hopefully not your own personal demise. Uh, Secondly, mm. I want to call young people yes. to go out and vote. Mm. Uh, the voter turnout by young people is the lowest uh, mm. and yet we are the majority. <coughs> so young people go out and vote. 
I will be voting to secure my future. Mm. I hope you go vote to secure your future too. Thank you. Thank you. Um, Mr. Kamadi, as we're finalizing from the human rights perspective, what could be your last parting shots to the people? Surely, the dignity of the human person is important. Mm. Uh, I would like to urge security agencies mm. to respect the rights of Ugandans. Thank you so much. Yeah. That is uh, Mr. Kamadi <laughs> from the Uganda Human Rights. I want to thank you, all those who have been with us. Now, in Entebbe, you understand my colleague Ivan Kamana Walunyolo is on the ground and he's on standby to give us what is currently happening on ground. Ivan.